Hi, I'm Golok Kumar Sindhli. Uh, let me at the outset thanks Tech Observer, uh, Ms. Shalini and his, her entire team for bringing me here to deliver the uh, keynote on the DJ, Digital Senate 2022. Uh, today we'll be discussing on the uh, topic reimagining modern workflow uh, and how the government IT is stepping up. Uh, to start with, I'll, I'll focus on three, four areas when we say, how do you, you know, build your IT strategy? How do you reimagine your you know, digital workflow? How do you reimagine your digital work, uh, no environment? And some of these you know, key factors are, uh, you know, there are three, four areas which one has to focus. The first area is the digital first strategy. Now, when I say digital first strategy, we remember our earlier days when we started from silo days, then we moved towards a consolidation stage. Today we are at a automation stage and many of us, we are advancing towards kind of a next level of experience in terms of citizens, in terms of our consumers, uh, in terms of beneficiary at large and also uh, in terms of a stakeholder ecosystem at large. Now, if we uh, know, see the today's era and in the automation days and you know, as I said, uh, the next level of uh, user experience, uh, rightly it comes to our mind saying that, you know, how do you take it forward? The aim is to move towards a paperless environment. The aim is to move towards a uh, cashless environment. The aim is to uh, move towards a transparent, accountable environment, and which probably we have done uh, in the Passport Seva program in Ministry of External Affairs at large. The idea is also how do you make uh, your services available anytime, anywhere, uh, 24 by 7 kind of a scenario, and from any devices kind of a scenario. Now, if you can plan in that direction, uh, it, it takes an enormous effort. No, it's it's not a one-day exercise. One has to start, learn, mature, and then probably, uh, then probably, uh, no, you can think of a next level of giving uh, user experience or citizen experience, which uh, I'm referring to. So that is the first strategy one has to adjust. How do you take a digital first strategy? The second uh, strategy is how do you also take an approach we will call data-driven approach. Today, every one of us, whether I as a government, someone from private uh, academia, research, research institute, uh, everyone is you know, purely and uh, probably wholly based on data. Now, when you say data-driven businesses, data-driven consumers, data-driven uh, stakeholders, business at large. Uh, idea uh, comes to my mind is you no know, uh, any business we see, whether it is a public service delivery, uh, whether it is a uh, no kind of a uh, any any private kind of a business, any kind of a uh, government schemes, you no know, anything and everything. Uh, the first you start, the day you start, you always just try how do I improve. How do I kind of a innovate, which is something new? How do I kind of a prioritize my thing? Now, all of these things, you want to innovate, you want to improve, you want to prioritize, uh, you, you want to eliminate silos. There are a lot of silos we observe when you take this kind of a digital uh, no kind of a move, digital adoption, uh, digital ecosystem at large. We realize that there are a lot of silos, you know, uh, within the uh, system, within the uh, public sector at large. So, how do you remove those silos? How how do you eliminate those silos? So, that is another advantage when you uh, take a data-driven strategy. Then it also give you advantage of uh, competitor advantage. Let me give you an uh, example here. Let's say two uh, service providers or two ISPs are competing to each other when they are providing a, let's say, particular 
internet uh, based uh, kind of a services to let's say two of the consumers now how did they exactly know that what exactly the consumer is looking uh, for from me what exactly the consumer is expecting as a next level of kind of expectation from the uh, internet service provider and it is purely kind of a based on data trends it is also purely based on your uh, history of the data sets available data points available and it is the data which will tell you saying that you know, how far the consumer is you know, kind of satisfied with the uh, services or with the uh, connections you are providing to the uh, client. And where are the problems? If at all there is a problem, how do you improve them uh, you know, and, and monitor them? You know, while you improve, you can also monitor saying that, okay, this month, this is the target I achieve. But next month, I can I can even think one step ahead while uh, giving customer experience or the consumer experience. So once you understood your data sets well, once you have kind of a thorough visibility of your data end to end, right from I always say that ingestion to insights, then uh, you no know, bringing improvement, bringing innovations, eliminating silos. Uh, behaving the way the con customer need, uh, the behaving the way the uh, your users are seeking uh, the services from you becomes so easy. Uh, I can give another example during this pandemic, you know, when we uh, realize, that, realize that most of our uh, passport seekers or passport applicants, they are uh, kind of a not able to approach to a passport seva kendra because of that particular zone is affected by let's say COVID-19. It was the data which you know we, we could analyze and see that you know how do I address that particular passport seekers or passport applicant? How do I reschedule my appointments? Uh, when do I reschedule my appointments? And how do I also keep my uh, citizens informed so that you know, they, they do not face any kind of uh, no problem uh, in spite of this kind of a pandemic, in spite of uh, this kind of sudden uh, exigencies, you know, which, which you know, we all realized during this COVID era. And, but uh, you no, know, I'll say if data is not handy with you, if the data points are not perfect data driven, uh, no kind of a business strategy. How do you develop a data-driven uh, business strategy? So I spoke about the first one is the digital first strategy. Second is the data-driven strategy. Then the third, uh, very important when you talk about you know, uh, reimagining your digital workflow, uh, especially you know, in the government sector, but the third very uh, important factors come to my mind is uh, today, uh, more or less, you know, uh, if you see the entire uh, digital environment has changed in terms of uh, you know, dealing with your customer. When I say dealing with, with your customer, uh, in terms of your corporate data center, in terms of your corporate applications, uh, in terms of your, your corporate network. And what exactly I'm trying to hint here, uh, saying that you know, we realize that the pandemic has taught us is no more it is kind of a uh, CUG kind of a scenario, no more it is uh, on-premises data center kind of a uh, scenario. And therefore, uh, this cloud journey, you know, the cloud enablement uh, become very uh, handy during this time. And more or less, we now realize that uh, that is the journey forward. No, you have to plan your uh, kind of a workload, your workforce, your workflow in such a way that during these kind of exigency, uh, you have to take a dual approach. Now, when I say dual approach, a hybrid approach, uh, probably what I'm suggesting is some of your workload, uh, probably you can continue to deal on premises, uh, your sensitive workload, your critical workload. However, some of your workload can straight away go into uh, cloud kind of environment where uh, 
uh, no, you you have readily available uh, no a space. You have readily be available security concerns. You have readily available hosting environment. I mean, end to end, you can address the things uh, without bothering too much about uh, those platforms, those IT ecosystem at large, uh, those maintenance and support, those agility, those kind of a demand variation. So many of your workloads can straightly uh, and straight away shift into this kind of a cloud kind of an environment. However, however, you have to also be cautious saying that what kind of workload you are shifting to the cloud, what kind of workload you are dealing on premises. And to do that, to do that, uh, no, the another very important factor that is where I call you must have a data strategy, right? And when I say data strategy, again, no, do you really understand what kind of data you are dealing? Is it your mission critical data? Is it your sovereign data? Is it your uh, FUDDC data? Is it your public data? Is it your citizen data? So once you understand your data sets well, then your jobs become easy, you know, in terms of which is the workload I should continue to deal with on premises and which is the workload probably I can think of a cloud kind of a uh, platform where uh, the, the, the kind of a agility, the kind of a demand variation, the kind of a expectations, you know, my users and citizens are looking for me those can be uh, kind of addressed very immediately and uh, no, very uh, easily, right? So that is the another factor comes to my mind. Uh, then comes your uh, another area which uh, we always see that you no, know, uh, this kind of a, when you think of a reimagining your digital workflow, uh, another area uh, to be considered is you no, know, as I was saying, uh, gone are the days when we are thinking you no know, kind of a reactive kind of a scenario. Uh, those reactive days have uh, days has already gone now. We have moved ahead from reactive days to uh, proactive days and not even proactive days. Today we are talking about a predictive age. Now when you talk about a predictive age, uh, the, the scenario comes is you no know, again you no. Know, how do you have those kind of a auto provisioning? How do you can have those kind of a auto response? Uh, in all sense, in all sense, when I say in terms of your businesses at large, in terms of your backend at large, in terms of your consumer at large, and also in terms of your uh, you no know, resource provisioning and you no know, resource uh, maintenance and support. And therefore, there also I foresee that. Uh, the cloud kind of a journey becomes easy when you look for auto provisioning, auto response, auto agility. Now, this kind of scenario, if you are looking, then cloud journey becomes uh, no, uh, easy to address these this problems. Uh, then a last thing probably I'll also take up saying that no, when we uh, really try to address uh, this kind of a next level of citizen experience, uh, next level of consumer experience, next level of consumer behavior, uh, con competitive advantage at large, uh, forecasting, demand forecasting, uh, demand adjustment, uh, workforce variation, workforce skilling and reskilling. Uh, all those things, you know, I personally believe that the start point is how do you develop a digital ethics? The next point is how do you create a digital platform, which is anytime, anywhere, 24 by seven, uh, from any device kind of a scenario. The next uh, uh, thing comes to our mind is once you have this kind of a setup, uh, can you create that kind of a visibility, whether it is on premises, uh, platform or a cloud enabled platform. Can you create that visibility end to end where I as a uh, no consumer, you as a citizen, you feel secure saying that, okay, uh, no, there if I access some services, there if I share my data, there if I uh, interact with this particular government department, my data is safe and secure, right? 
and also uh, the purpose for which the data being collected it is not being kind of a misused or abused in any form in terms of secondary use in terms of uh, violating the privacy norms so all those concerns no uh, end to end how do you address and to address end to end concerns of uh, privacy and security concerns during this kind of a you know reimagining your uh, digital platform at large reimagining your uh, digital workflow at large and also reimagining your ecosystem at large you have to ensure that end to end security and privacy concerns are also taken care of and to do that to do that uh, the important uh, point comes to my mind is now how do you develop that kind of a uh, security strategy and security framework uh, which is which must not be i always say that left to the audit it must not be left to post facto investigation but or it it must be part of your uh, design it must be part of intrinsic intrinsic to each layer each layer of your digital foundation each layer of your application code each layer of your user interface and if you can develop that kind of a uh, security framework security strategy which is part of the design which is intrinsic to each layer of the ecosystem digital ecosystem at large where you no know, there is a uh, kind of a, a environment is created which is you no know, it it gives a kind of a digital ethics for every one of us whether i as a uh, service seeker you as a service provider uh, stakeholder at large uh, then probably i feel the journey becomes easy end to end no how do you deal with your uh, digital strategy at large how do you deal with your uh, data at large and also how do you deal with your consumer and customer at large so that's how i uh, end uh, my uh, opening keynote in the digital kinet uh, sinet 2022 uh, i once again thanks uh, take off jawar their entire team uh, for bringing me here thank you thank you very much